video. We start off by filtering the clay and sand. I filter that this way, you just throw it against it there. Filter it to take out the rocks because we can't have them because it's for a, to make a plaster layer basically. So filter them and it goes like that. Let me use a fine screen to make the clay slip. This is this mixed with water, and we use that as a glue on the wall. So you start off with clay slip, and then you paint the clay, well you first of all wet the wall, then use the clay slip as a paint, and then as a kind of paint glue, and then on top of that you plaster by hand. And so we've made four different mixes, uh, with different quantities of sand to clay. So, with clay to sand, sorry. So in this one, one clay, one sand. This one, two clay, one sand. And this one, uh, four clay to four and a half sand. Um, so at the beginning of the day, we did uh, the pot test. And you put about one third of earth and the rest of water into a pot, shake it, leave it for an hour. After that time it should start settling out into sand at the bottom and clay above and then silt above that if you have any silt. Uh, ideally you want to wait until the water is completely clear above it, that will take a few days to a week. And But from here we can see that, yeah maybe it's even like 75-70% sand and the rest clay. Uh, which is almost ideal, but we found that we needed to add a little bit of uh, sand to the mix in order to make it uh, not too sticky. So the first thing we're going to do is filter some clay to get going with. And today we're going to be doing clay tests and applying them to walls and doing the various tests that you need to do. So I'll try and do this one one hand. Just chuck it onto the filter. That we discard. And this is tight. Our mixes. It's the first mix for the wall, so it's quite rough, so it doesn't matter. It's about a centimetre filter. So just equal amounts of sand and clay. Fill them up, make sure it's accurate because these are the tests. When, when you're making the actual mix it doesn't have to be perfect but for the test it's always better to try and keep some accuracy. <coughs> uh, so we're going to make a lot because we want to do tests on lots of different walls. Mm. So that's three. And this is not sifted. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, okay, so. So there's a bunch of different tests you can do when you've made your mix. This actually does feel not too bad. It doesn't, it's not as sandy as it looked like it was going to be. Mm. So if you all want to come round, You want to come round and get your hands in, and you can start to feel which one? Uh, where it feels on my heels, on my Yeah, exactly. So that's another test. Uh, 
you rub it in your fingers mm. and if it feels really really sandy like it does now yeah. you can feel that it's a mm. little bit mm. too much sand mm. Okay. Mm. maybe um, this sand is not thin enough? Uh, no the, the sand this is the right uh, kind of size of sand you might need a tiny bit more water now okay so So, <coughs> there is the ball test, which is, you make a ball. Throw it, that's <laughs> And you take it to a flat surface. Mm. And from kind of waist height, mm. you drop the ball. And that's quite nice. So, if there was too much sand, it, it would break. start it would to kind crack. of break yeah. at the side and crack. Yeah. If it was too much clay or it was too wet, it would just go <laughs> and mm. go out. But actually that held its shape. Maybe I was a little bit too gentle with it. Maybe I'll have to do it a little bit higher. Mm. Yeah, a, still, bit, a bit of crack. It's but okay, yeah. But it's okay. I would say maybe someone can do over one to one sand. So more sand than clay. And then two to, people to be do, sure. Yeah, two people do more clay than sand. Like so a bit. At one bit of the, the sand? Uh, Maybe half. Yeah, yeah it could be half. We'll, we'll have a think about mm -hmm. that in a minute. So, the second test you need to do is the sausage test. Um, make a sausage and the, it has to be able to hold its shape at least two and a half centimeters from the outside of your thumb. And if it holds its shape, it's still, yeah, yep. and then it breaks, then it but it's much more than two and a half centimeters. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know that the clay content is enough for it to, to hold. hold itself. Okay. Wow, this uh -huh. is so nice. <laughs> test. Can it be the poop test? Oh, the poop test, yeah, <laughs> whatever you want. Uh, test, space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you fill it almost to the top. And the point of this test is to see how much the bro uh, block shrinks by when it dries. Okay. So these are 30 centimeters, right? Yes. Um, so the like bricks. These are 30 centimeters. Yeah, yeah. So you need to see what percentage it has shrunk by when it's completely dry after like one or two weeks. And what you need to look for is if there's lots of cracks going across, then it could be too much clay. Mm -hmm. um, too much clay. Too much clay. Yeah. There is so crack. Yeah. yeah. Because mm. the clay makes it shrink more. Eh? So yeah, so the, the clay is what uh, holds the water. And so if you have lots of clay, then it has lots of water when you make it. So when it dries, all the water leaves and they leave cracks. So that's okay. kind of the, the theory. But you need the clay to stick it to the wall and to hold it. So you need to find that perfect balance or good balance. And so, yeah, we'll do that last. I reckon try and make a a full bucket each mm -hmm. and we may need to make more but it's quite a big pot. Actually no, we can make this half pot. Uh, so yeah, we got the one to one and we need to write one here which is which. Uh, so we one do first, one to one we did. Yeah, we one to one we've done. Then one that is like a bit more sand than... Yeah, I would do maybe one clay, one and a half sand. sand. Yeah, one sand, one and a half clay. Yeah. yeah, exactly. One sand, one and a half clay, and then one sand, two clay. Okay. And I think from there we oh, should... Oh, the, the range. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, it's so yeah. obvious that the one sand and the two clay are going to crack? Uh, well, we need to test it to push the limit. Because this is, you know, it feels like it's at the limit. Um, but we're going to do one test higher just to check because this might actually end up being the ideal mix. Uh, and we're going lower um, to see if it doesn't crack too much because it's nice to have a lot of clay in it because then it's really easy to work with. Mm. That's kind of another most, one of the tests is you're not going to know. Do you have as much clay possible without making it crack? Uh, <laughs> kind of, yeah. It's like, you know, there is a, a mark you're looking for which is the 25% clay, 75% sand. 
understand, but it's also going to depend on how it works on your wall. Because yeah. we're working on the concrete, one of its concrete, one of its yeah. cement. Uh, one it's of going its to be whatever. different for each wall. Yeah, exactly. So okay. you, we're going to do tests of every mix on every wall, yeah. and maybe you'll use different mixes on each wall. So when these are dry, mm -hmm. you push it to one end, measure the space here, mm. and then find that out as a percentage of 30 centimeters. Okay. It can't be more than 4%. Okay. So yeah, the longer they are, the better. Then you, have, then you can see exactly how much they shrink. So yeah. So we start out with water and then clay slip, which is it. There you go. And the clay slip is fine filtered clay with sand. Then make the first application by hand or with a tool if you want. Pushing it really, really hard into the wall. It looks like it's sticking, yeah. even though it's on paint, which we didn't expect. Which is why we did tests on everything. So we've got three different types of wall here. So we're doing tests on each one. And yeah, we mark out which one is which, and then exactly the same process for each one. A bit of water to so the wall's not so dry that it just sucks all the water out of the mix. Then the clay slip, which is this, and then the plaster. So now that we've applied all of the mixes onto the wall, we've got to leave them to dry. If it's in a sunny spot, then we'd have to cover them with plastic to keep them in the shade, and also consider spraying them, like misting them with water. Uh, so they don't dry too quickly and then after they dry we're going to see if they come off the wall quickly so you kind of tap it with a hammer and see if it comes off as one piece uh, if it doesn't then it should be okay also seeing how it holds up against scratches <clears throat> again you can use the, the sharp side of a hammer see you know how it holds up against what like a cupboard falling against it for example if it was outside then we would get a hose spray it on uh, onto each one and see how long it takes, time how long it takes for the clay to fall off and also we want to see when it's dry whether it starts to dust off when you brush it uh, so that would mean it has too much sand or if it starts to crack too much which would mean it have too much clay so there's always going to be small cracks but uh, you don't want them to be so big that they start to compromise the uh, the finish and so it starts to come off for example um, so to have a look at how they look now the one-to-one -one is a little bit sandy but it's still okay so we're gonna wait for them to dry um, before doing tests on them the two-to-one though is that it's only one kind of difference one unit difference is very clay you can see that because it's uh, kind of a smooth effect already and there's no roughness to it and there's a it's probably going to crack and can you stop doing that this one is probably going to crack quite a lot this one is probably going to dust sand quite a lot and we're not going to know until they're completely dry uh, whereas the one and a half to one it looks kind of nice i quite like it it feels good uh, it's stuck well it was nice to work with, which is another kind of parameter is whether they're nice to work with. And so we did, there's four different types of walls here. One is breeze block with cement. One is bare breeze block. One is paint, which is probably going to be the hardest to, to work onto in terms of sticking. And one is uh, kind of plastered cement, concrete. So it's smooth plastered. Um, so it's not ideal. Um, but it is possible, but we do need to do the tests and need to be thorough with the tests. Uh, onto a cobble though, you could, you know, you could even play it by eye, by ear, by hand, uh, as to what you think might work, and because you're working clay onto clay, you've got a pretty good chance that it's going to stick, but with all these 
surfaces. The only one I'm really confident with is the breeze block because we've worked onto them before. And it's got these joints here, which are really, really rough, so they act as a great key. Uh, so that you can kind of push the, the cob into the bricks, into the joints, and it creates a, a really strong between the, the cement blocks and the clay. Uh, whereas if you were to do just this flat surface, it might not be so easy to make it stick. Um, this one is also quite nice. It's got lots of rough bits, lots of keys where we can push it in and it will hold it. Um, this one, it's rough, but uh, you know, it's this. It's a modern paint, so it's going to be the least easy to stick. So in the end, we just made a little test here, just painting directly with slip which is the fine filtered, filtered clay with water, just to see how it looks, because you know, maybe they'll end up just doing a paint on here, because it's already kind of been rendered. It's not totally smooth, but it's not really, really rough and offensive. <clears throat> so if these mixes don't really stick very well, we can just do uh, a paint on that particular part. Then we've got the outside space, which is a smooth cement render. Uh, Again, not ideal. This is probably the second worst out of the four to work onto because there's no keys, and but you know it's semi-absorbent, so you know it might it might be okay. But we've done the four different mixes on the four different surfaces because it might end up that we do uh, you know a one-to-one -one in here, but a two-to-one here. Uh, but we're going to have to see that in the end. If we are working well, they are going to be working onto this in the end. So you can see it's getting direct midday sun. So in this case, it would put, put up some sort of tarpaulin uh, to stop the sun hitting it directly. If it dries too quickly, then uh, it can uh, create an air gap between the wall and the render and it just fall off. So uh, yeah, if you have a mister for, to kind of mist it with water during the day when it's drying, It'll help it to dry more slowly, so kind of like cement, for example, where the slower it dries, the harder and stronger it gets.